Globe and Mail columnist Jeffrey Simpson recently called U.S. presidential contender Mitt Romney the tin man of the Republican Party, the man who will probably be the next GOP nominee for president of the U.S. for no other reason than the collection of misfits, egotists, ideologues, and second readers who are running against him. Well, that's what he said. Paul Quirk is a Harvard-trained political science professor who holds the Phil Lynn Chair in U.S. Politics and Representation at UBC, and it is my pleasure to welcome Professor Paul Quirk back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Thank you very much, Fanny. It's good to be here. Primary craziness has begun. Well, it's, uh, it's underway in the intense part, but it's been underway for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. The United States takes two years to elect a president. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> uh, tell me how the system works. Give me the dummy's guide to, to primaries. Who votes? How does it work? The key thing is that in primary elections, anybody who wants to vote can vote. They, in most states, they have to uh, choose whether to vote in the Democratic or, or uh, uh, Republican primaries based on their uh, party registration. Mm -hmm. Some states they can just pick when they go into the voting booth. Uh, but it's uh, voters who decide to show up. So it's ordinary voters, but not as many as uh, show up at the general election. And they therefore tend to be a, a bit more uh, of a partisan group and a more ideologically committed group. Right. So in the Republican side, it's a, it's a quite conservative uh, group of American citizens amounting to 25% of the population in most of the states. Sure, so the keen being voter, if you will. Yes. Or not. Yes. Uh, Jeffrey Simpson, one of my favorite columnists, yes. uh, suggests that Mitt Romney is uh, about the only good choice to run for the Republicans. What you say? Well, I think, uh, I think it's c correct uh, that he would be the... Uh, one with by far the greatest chance and uh, of, be, of beating uh, Obama, and uh, and that the others, in fact, would have uh, quite serious problems. Mm -hmm. I think it is an unusual uh, his characterization, though, <laughs> you know, uh, stronger than I would make, uh, has a right. lot of sense to it. Mm -hmm. But I think electability is a a, a big thing in yes. this election. Who can take out Barack Obama? Well, electability is is a big thing, but uh, these, these uh, conservative Republican uh, voters don't uh, trust Romney. Uh, to, and that's kind of the main narrative of this of mm -hmm. this primary. Most uh, people, uh, e even the conservative Republicans, recognize that Romney is the one who has the better chance of getting elected. But he's having a hard time uh, selling himself to these these voters, and how that's going to go is not clear. He's considered a moderate. He doesn't necessarily have the populist touch, right? Or does he? No, I think it's correct. He has a patrician style and uh, a very wealthy background, and he looks like uh, somebody from central casting. Mm -hmm. uh, so he he doesn't mm -hmm. have. Uh, he wears jeans on the, on the campaign trail, but it, it doesn't look real. You can see through the jeans, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, uh, the father, wasn't he a big American motor exec? Yes, uh, so, uh, and Rom governor of Michigan. Governor of Michigan, yeah. and uh, so he was raised in a wealthy family, and he himself is wealthy, Bain Capital. Yes. Uh, will that hurt or hinder him? I know they're trying to hit at him. The other candidates about uh, he uh, creates jobs, but he fi but he also exports jobs. Yeah. Uh, so his company w was a specialist in in uh, buying troubled firms and getting them going right, and often mm -hmm. that involved a lot of uh, dismissals. So uh, he has some vulnerabil vulnerability on that point. My view is that that is much less important in the Republican primary, where most of the voters are relatively well off, have jobs, are less sensitive to this matter of employment, mm -hmm. uh, and sympathetic to businesses doing what they do, right? uh, than it would be in the general election. I think that that angle will, will be a big factor in the Democratic campaign against him. If, okay, so you know. they give, uh, in a sense, fodder to the Democrats to yes. say, this is, if Romney is the candidate, this is his vulnerable point. Right, I think that's Hit that. him there. That's right. So shouldn't he answer it now instead of later? Well, no, he is answering it now, and uh, he'll answer it now and later. And the answer is that uh, his efforts in Bain Capital created jobs, as he said, you know, that the way the capitalist system works is that 
Uh, weaker companies have to mm -hmm. fall by the wayside and stronger companies take over and it's good for employment and good for uh, everybody's income. So that will, be his, uh, right. that will be his case. It's not a bad argument. A pundit suggested last night on the Charlie Rose Show that the Republican Party of today is no longer the Wall Street Party. It is the uh, white male blue collar party. Agree, disagree? Well, uh, I, yeah, I don't think I do agree. I, I think a good point that's been, uh, been made recently, recently and really does pertain to this election is that there are, uh, there are sort of three parties. There is a, uh, there's a Wall Street uh, party, um, and then there are, there's an ideological libertarian uh, party, mm -hmm. which is smaller, but it's behind uh, Ron Paul. And then there is a Christian conservative uh, party. And uh, where the blue collar workers uh, fit in is uh, mostly uh, if, they're, if they're Christian conservatives. Right. Some of them, a few of them, are, would be. Uh, and maybe in South Carolina. Yeah. I uh, don't know. Yeah, but that's, mm -hmm. I think that's the key thing that, that there, are, uh, there are different kinds of conservatives, and you know, there are f still four conservative, uh, more cons candidates more conservative than Romney who have a real shot at the, or are active at least, and the difficulty is sorting out which of those is going to be the main rival. So Rick Perry, um, governor of Texas since, what, 2000? Uh, roughly that. Yeah, roughly that. that yeah. And he's the one that made the small gaffe. I was just reading yeah. my Vanity Fair. Yes. It's not a small gaffe when it makes Vanity Fair uh, in the debate. Yes. He couldn't remember the third uh, agency he wanted to get rid of. And, right, right. And even Romney threw him out. He gave him some suggestions. <laughs> gave him some suggestions. <laughs> and said, well, what about the EPA? Yeah, that's Maybe right. that's what you were trying to think of. Right. Uh, well, I would actually, uh, I was listening to your discussion of this in the earlier segment, and mm -hmm. I, would, I, I think there is an important aspect to this, which is, in addition to the stress, it, it does show that he has not been talking and thinking about this for a long time. Mm. That, that is, he is not mm -hmm. deeply involved in the issues about federal policy and uh, some elements of his program kind of cooked up quite recently and not necessarily thought about very much. Right. You know, Did the handler backstage give him the right. list and he's not quite sure what he's supposed to say, but right. he says this because somebody right. told him to, right. or right. does he own it? That's right. Uh, so, so someone who's a serious, seriously engaged in, in public policy d discusses for a long time, you know, mm -hmm. whether to get rid of the energy department. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then energy comes immediately to mind, mm -hmm. you know, when he's discussing the question. I don't know what Sarah Palin would have to say about that. <laughs> but well, she's mute. She's, yeah. no, I don't mean she's mute, but she seems to be missing. Yeah, well, I think uh, what's happened is that uh, once she decided that she wasn't going to actually run, and this might mm -hmm. have happened even if she had decided she would run, but she's just no longer uh, newsworthy for any, for any particular reason. People don't really think that her opinion on the candidates is the one they want to hear. And so she's by the wayside. And the other female, the distaff side, Michelle Bachman, gone right. uh, after Iowa, That's first right. primary. Right. Her, uh, I mean, she had a very disappointing result in, in Iowa. And uh, it was a state where she should have done well and where at an earlier time she, she had a lot of support. So uh, that's a case where the tea leaves from one state, I think, are quite significant about the future. Mm. And I think she drew the correct conclusion that she didn't have a good right. prospect. Why is that? I mean, what happens in Iowa that says, Michelle Bachman, not interested in you? That, that was uh, uh, kind of remarkable. The, the, uh, uh, the only things that uh, are easy to point to are that on the one hand, she made some statements about uh, uh, the HPV vaccine uh, mm -hmm. causing retardation, uh, yes. which were bizarre, and then she stuck to them. Uh, and I think people maybe were put off by that. But the, the, in terms of timing, the main thing that happened was that uh, Rick Perry came, on, um, came to prominence, had much more money, and seemed uh, for a time to be more compelling to mm -hmm. the uh, Christian conservative mm -hmm. uh, base. And uh, so I think she lost out to him, and then he fell apart quickly. Okay, and today is the New Hampshire primary. Right. Uh, John Huntsman, uh, Utah. Isn't it what, Utah? Yes. Uh, 
senator? Uh, governor governor, of Utah. Governor, sorry. Governor of Utah. Ambassador used to be to ambassador to China. Or still ambassador to no. China? Used to be ambassador to China. That would make sense. Yeah. When we come back, let's talk about John Huntsman. and where Because uh, somebody suggested last night, another pundit, that Huntsman may come in second. They, they suspect or predict yes. <laughs> Romney will win. Huntsman could take second in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Uh, we'll come back uh, with Professor Paul Quirk.